Many of us commonly drive to work in the rain, but few of us drive to work because of the rain. Solano County's Jepson Prairie Preserve is home to the California Tiger Salamander. Its life cycle includes both an upland and a wetland component. During a storm, it emerges at night from underground to travel to the prairie's ponds. So if a storm has come in overnight and you are a researcher who studies this small animal, then you'll be starting to work, sometimes in the rain, before sunrise. Dr. Chris Searcy, a researcher at the University of California, Davis, leads the crew members who study this tiny animal. Amphibians thrive when water is plentiful, but in California, water can be scarce. It's living in a habitat that's extremely harsh for amphibians. If you go out to Jepson Prairie in the middle of the summer, it's bone dry, there's no water in Olcott Lake, it probably hasn't rained in a couple months, uh, the ground is rock hard, and it's just impossible to believe that there's any amphibians living out there. So I think the California tiger salamander has a really interesting life history in how it's adapted to handle this really harsh climate. Some of the salamanders have been marked for identification from a previous capture, so each is examined closely to search for these markers. It's an endangered species that um, is mostly threatened by habitat loss. Conserving the appropriate habitat for it is very important, which is particularly difficult in California where land prices are very high. So we're trying to figure out which parts of the habitat are most important for the salamanders so that we can really focus in on those. The pitfall trap array is constructed so that the salamanders are intercepted on their way to Olcott Lake. Here, Dr. Searcy examines a juvenile male. I think it's only a juvenile. Okay. Um, I think you'd see more thin if it was a female, and also usually they're not they're not nearly as swollen as the males, but they are slightly swollen oh, okay. yeah. at the vet. I guess this one is just a tad. But. For each salamander captured, a photograph is recorded. We have a custom-made pattern recognition program that allows us to identify individual uh, salamanders based on their dorsal spot pattern. So we enter all of the digital photographs into this program and then it uh, compares each new entry to all of the previous entries in the database and allows us to see if it's a recapture of a salamander we've found okay. before. The salamander's mass, or weight, is also recorded. Oh, 19.4. How many California tiger salamanders inhabit the Jepson Prairie? I can hazard a guess, which would be about 20,000. So far, the recapture rate has not been high enough to get a good statistical estimate on that. The salamanders move from the upland to the wetlands to breed. But how do they know where the breeding pond is? That is a wonderful question that I have really wanted to figure out. If I analyze the movement of the salamanders around the pitfall trap array. Their movement is no different from random, so they're not making beelines towards the pond. They're sort of walking at a oblique angle across the array. It doesn't seem like if they're really just wandering randomly that they would actually be able to find the pond because um, usually the ponds are small compared to the size of the upland habitat. So it seems like there must be some way to find the pond, but I haven't been able to figure out what it is. It's, they're not heading directly to the pond, they're not always traveling downhill. Finally, I asked Dr. Searcy how he became interested in studying salamanders. My uh, grandfather actually studied salamanders, so I would help him collect salamanders for his experiments, and I always loved going out at night with a headlamp to grab a bunch of salamanders. I like being out in the field a lot, so I'm really glad that my research has a strong field component. 
and it was really later on that I learned about all of the interesting ecology and life history attributes of amphibians. Um, so I would say that probably my love of the animals came first, and then my interest in the concepts came after that. The year's field work is suspended only after the last storms have passed and the ponds dry down. The California tiger salamander is listed both as threatened and endangered depending upon its location. It is hoped that the work of researchers such as Dr. Searcy will contribute to the conservation of this unique California amphibian.